Hi and welcome to Landry Anka on YouTube. I'm going to shoot a few videos here because uh, in a couple days I leave to uh, attend my brother's memorial. My brother was 59 and he was found dead in his home alone. And basically I want to dedicate this video to him and my parents who died just a short while ago also. Now, there were just the four of us. My immediate family is my brother, myself, and my parents. And um, they're all now gone. I am on my own. And I'm going to my niece and nephew. My brother did have a son and daughter. My niece and nephew will be at this memorial. And we have a lot of friends, a lot of family that's going to show up that loved Doug. The reason I'm dedicating this to him, and I'm shooting this stuff in advance because I'm going to have a couple days where you're not going to see me. I want to make sure I'm releasing some good stuff to you while I'm gone. Um, and I'm going to shoot while I'm there so you can see what's going on. I want to share this experience with you because there's something really important about my family that I want to share that I'm actually almost done with a book about all of this. And that is, they all had something in common and I'm so different from them. That is, they never went after their dreams. They lived a life of fear. Now my father probably would have gone full blow, full force after his dreams, but he, he had a relationship with my mother that was, um, let's say, codependent. They got married very young and they spent their whole life. My mother needed came from a very troubled family. She loved that my dad, dad came from a stable family and he created an incredibly beaver cleaver style, you know, very secure family. They had the two kids and they had a home when they were like, you know, early 20s. I think my mom was, you know, 20 years old and or no she was 19 years old and my mother had a house and two kids so when they moved out to this lake house which you'll get to see in the next in the future video um, while I'm there for memorial um, we had a wonderful childhood but when my brother and I moved out of the house that went downhill because my parents no longer had that dream of the perfect family to hang on to. They had to look at themselves and say, what are our individual dreams? My dad was very entrepreneurial minded, but because he's such a responsible guy and had gone so long in this, you know, pattern of being the stable guy that took care of everything, he really had a tough time breaking out of that. He actually wanted to buy a McDonald's franchise at one time. Would have been probably an awesome thing for him to do. But my, my mother discouraged him. Now, my brother was very much the same way where he never broke out. My dad offered to help him launch a business because he was really good at, at fixing cars and painting them. He really had a lot of training in that. He was an auto kind of guy. But he never did it. He never had the confidence to do it. So here's my mom. She wanted security. So she never wanted the dad to go outside of his comfort, of her comfort zone. My dad really wanted to go outside of his comfort zone. He would have been awesome at it, but never did. Because he had this programming somewhere that, you know, he needed to stay there and take care of everybody. And then there was my brother who was extremely insecure. Never thought he was good enough to be any of these things, yet he had my dad there hoping he would. And then he had me, who was off doing every crazy thing, you know, traveling all over the world, trying out for everything, trying every job, you know, whatever I liked, launched my own company, my own business, I should say, when I was, I think, 19. Just doing everything, making tons of mistakes, failing, being broke, but it didn't stop me. I went and got scholarships. I lived overseas. I struggled a lot. And then I had awesome, awesome success. You know, life is a journey. And I look at what I did, which is not easy. Being an entrepreneur is not easy. But I'm going to tell you something. I look at my parents and my brother, who are now gone. It's no coincidence that they died young. My dad was 80, but that's a different ball game altogether why he died. 
My mom was 74, my brother was 59. They were so done with life. And I'm telling you what, they were not happy. They did not live out their years happy. They lived out their lives really just tolerating every day instead of creating the life they really wanted to live. My mom thought she was secure and happy, but she was so unhappy. She just sat in that house, fearful of the world. And basically, her health, she didn't take care of herself. She just went downhill. My dad, the responsible person, took care of my mother, played that whole role. You know, my brother became very unhappy. He got divorced, and he basically hid from the world in fear and died alone in that house. I think he was there a few days before anybody found him because he isolated himself from everybody. What a sad way to go. How sad is that? So I thought about my life and I thought if I died tomorrow, I would have friends that knew because I do, you know, I'm here. I'm not, I'm not with anybody right now as of this video. My friends would know I was gone. I'd have people checking on me within 24 hours wondering where I, where I was, what's going on with me. I have been going out living the life that I've always wanted and then I have different goals and higher goals and I go on to the next thing that I want to do because you don't pick one goal in life and it just stays there. Well, some people do. Maybe, you know, somebody when they're, you know, two years old, they've got the stethoscope on, always wanted to be a doctor. But most people, their goals change and, and they think that they're not allowed to get out of that situation and change and say, okay, I don't want to be with that person. My parents probably should have got divorced because they had completely different goals. They would have been so happy without each other. My mother could have found somebody who was a homebody, and my dad could have been with somebody traveling and, and launching his own business. I knew he wanted to do that, but they codependently went back into that old pattern and became very, very unhappy, and now they're gone. Now they're gone. What are you doing with your life? Are you... Are you in those patterns? Are you still telling yourself a story and now years have gone by? You haven't really broken past those patterns, those, that life that isn't serving you? You know, so I quit investment banking after 20 years. And when my dad, I just went through this whole thing with my dad just two years ago. And I'm going back to this memorial and people were just blown away that since then, I've had two award-winning books and a movie. It's like, wow, what have you been doing? And I said, I'm going after my dreams. That's what I'm doing. No, it hasn't been easy. You know what? It's so much easier to be going after your dreams and having challenges along the way than staying in the unsatisfactory life and having challenges because you can't avoid them. You can't avoid them. Life's going to throw you all kinds of curveballs to push you into what you're supposed to be doing. And a lot of you, you're just petrified to go there. And you, you may notice that life is actually giving you what you've been asking for because somewhere in your head you really do want that. You've been sending that message to the universe. I want to be, you know, I want to own my business. I do want to be, I do want to have an internet business. That's what I'm doing. I'm expanding on that. I'm learning this. This has been a journey. But it's working. And I'm going to build on that. Because this is how I want to live my life. I want to live, I want to live anywhere in the world and have my business online so that I can travel and do whatever I want. So that I can write my books every day, which is what I do. That's my passion. What is it you're holding back on that the universe keeps going? Hey, you lost your job. I, I was sending what you get, you wanted. You don't, you don't want to be in this job. You hate this job. You lost your job. Here's this other opportunity. What are you going to do now? And then you don't do it. So you go back into something else you don't love. 
just to pay the bills, and the universe sends you another curveball because that's what you asked for, because back in your mind you're still not happy, this keeps going and you're not getting the hint that you need to go after those dreams because you can't hide the fact that back here that's still telling you, I want to be doing this, I want this, I want that, I want that. Okay, universe is going here. And then you say, oh, I can't, I can't do that, I can't. So conflicting messages to the universe. You, you see, so you're losing on both sides. You're sending the positive messages. It sends you the stuff to make you go do that. You don't do the stuff because you're saying, I'm, you know, I'm not good enough. I can't do it. That's too risky. That's scary. It's out of my comfort zone. So you send that message to the universe. So it's sending you more bad stuff. Double whammy. Why aren't you creating your, your own reality, the one you want? It's time to do it. My parents are gone. That lifetime could have been completely different for them. I'm so thankful I had awesome parents, and my brother was a wonderful person. We got along incredibly well. I don't know many uh, siblings that get along like we did. We're only a year apart. How sad. How sad. That's my only sadness with him, is that he didn't live out a happy life. He was troubled his whole life, retreated, and never thought he was good enough. You can give up those thoughts. Any, any thoughts that are restricting you. You can give up the negative thoughts, the thoughts that the world is bad or evil, or that, or that other people do things, that other people stop you from doing things. Nobody stops you from doing anything. You could be in prison and go after your dreams on some level. Learn things, get a degree, change the way you're thinking, change your life. Go into a peaceful place and become an enlightened being because that's true freedom. No matter where you are, you can find joy. But if you're not in prison, you don't have any excuses. Because even if you're in a situation, like if you're a caretaker for somebody or if you're in a situation where you have responsibilities that you cannot you know, get away from, there are things you can start doing right now, especially if you do get on the internet start training. You can do that whether you're a caretaker, a mom at home, no matter what your situation, if you have a computer, you can get on board with it. So I'm telling you all this because I want people to learn and to not wait. Don't wait. I think, wow, I've, I've taken chances my entire life and I think about all the stuff I've accomplished and I never remember the suffering. I don't remember how bad it felt. I can remember counting money on the floor with my roommate and we figured out we um, had enough money to get one burger and fries together. We were so broke. I don't, I remember actually how funny that was and I remember going to Washington DC to become a writer. I had a scholarship. <clears throat> I got paid. I was one of the few paid interns on Washington, on Capitol Hill. I remember how awesome that was. I don't remember the struggles. I don't remember any of the struggles. I remember the awesome experiences that I had and how incredible it was when I broke through barriers, when I did stuff, when I sold my house in Michigan and drove down to a place I never knew, Atlanta, on my own. Didn't know one person here. I knew I was supposed to be here. I went with my gut. I don't know why I was here. Because I, I had been working in New York and San Francisco and Arizona, the three places I loved the most. But I came here and it was one of the best things I ever did. And it was wonderful. And you know what? Worst case scenario, you pack up and you move someplace else if you don't like it, right? You try something, you learn from it, and then you say, okay, that's not my permanent thing. I'm going to do take that what I learn and I'm going to apply it to something else and I'm going to keep going and trying and doing and learning and, and experiencing life and meeting people along the way that will help you facilitate where you're supposed to be and that never ends. Then there'll be a new thing in a new place like me. 20 years investment banking, awesome, awesome career. 
decided it wasn't me anymore because the world's changing around us. And we need to change with it. It's getting dark again. All right, go after your dreams. I'm dedicating this to Doug. I hope that maybe his, his sadness, his insecurities will inspire you to let go of yours, your fears, your insecurities, or whatever else you're feeling that holds you back from living an awesome life. Namaste.